Hey, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I wanted to put together a quick little tutorial on how to fix some common bugs with Xcode. Sometimes Xcode's a little bit quirky. Sometimes things don't always work. So I wanna give you some tips if you're struggling. The first thing that I wanna say is we typed in a little bit of complicated code. So one of the important things as we're typing in code is that you make sure that you type everything that you see. And I've got lesson notes that's gonna have this exact code in it that you can follow along from as well. But what you do is make sure everything's spelled correctly. If you have a lowercase center, it's going to fail to build. So if we go through the process of building, we'll get an error message that says Swift compiler error, use of unresolved identifier notification lowercase center, and it says, did you mean notification center? So here Xcode's actually giving us a smart suggestion, which can help us fix that problem. So we can just say fix and it will fix it. Sometimes you'll completely mistype something and it might not work. And I have no idea if this is going to fail or not, but let's say I had some gibberish here. Let's see what happens if we try to run it. I'll hit the, the run button. Now we see, okay, this is like totally unrecognizable. So what does this mean? Un unresolved identifier. If you see an error like this, it probably means you have a typo. So look in your code and see where you declare it. So these are our outlets that we declare. When we use it, they have to match. So just make sure that that matches. And if you're following along and you introduce your own typos instead of my typos, then make sure that you either correct those typos at the beginning of when you figure that out, or you make sure that everything that you use uses the same typo. Whatever you do, if you misspell something, so if we have like three T's for text field, you need to make sure that that matches elsewhere, anywhere you're going to be using that, otherwise you'll have a build failure. And if we do this, we'll see that if I build it or run it, we'll see these error messages do appear. And we click on each one, we can see, okay, well, we're using it down here and we'd have to fix it and it's offering to fix it, but that's not the correct spelling. So I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna fix it like it should be spelled instead of trying to introduce more issues. So just verify code matches. It's both case sensitive and spelling sensitive. If you spell a, a system framework or thing that Apple provides incorrectly, like view controller or UI view controller, any of these, you're gonna have issues. Any of this, if you misspell or mistype, you're gonna have issues. So just Pause the video, type it in as you see it, or look at the lesson notes to, to better understand what I'm typing if it's not entirely clear on the screen. All right. The other thing I want to point out is when you set these up, if you change these, you can get into a situation where you have an immediate crash. So if I try to change this to the bill text field, when I actually go to to use it, we'll have problems. Or if I if I try to change some of these, you can mess up the connections. And let's see, I'll, I'll have another video that shows how that's going to cause a failure, but be aware that it can have a failure. I'll have another bug fixing video that's specific to that. I want to stay focused on just Xcode in this video, and we'll do that in the next one. All right, so... The other thing you want to do is under the, the product menu up top, there are options to build and clean and run. And a lot of times when I'm working, what you're seeing is I'm doing hotkeys. It's just my fingers naturally going to command R to run or command B to build. And if I'm running into problems with Xcode, I tend to do a lot of cleaning. So if we clean, what that does is it gets rid of the app that's in the build system, not actually on the simulator. And it will then when you hit build, it will rebuild the app and put everything together. We can see where it actually puts the app to start. So if I show this in Finder, this is where the app sort of lives. If I were to clean it, crossing my fingers, this should work. Now, if I say show in Finder, we'll see that the tip app is not there. And if I bring this back over and we build it, we'll see that the tip app now appears. So we see a tip app here. It's not a Mac app, so we can't run it on our Mac but this will then get copied over to our simulator and then we can run it there. So cleaning is really useful. Highly recommend it if you get wonky behavior and you can't figure it out. If you change any projects, project settings in here, sometimes if you're changing these identifiers or your team, you do need to do a clean and then rebuild and it should fix a lot of those common problems. 
rebuilding your project again after you clean is really important. So you can build it and instead of just running the app, now it's just making sure that the code is, is working. And this is a faster step than always running the app because if you run the app, you have to wait for it to move over to your simulator. But if you just build it after making a code change, you can quickly verify that something's working. So if I were to say, let's do a print statement, hello, and I wanted to verify that I typed this correctly, I would go to product build, or I'd use the command B key, and that would go through the build process up top, and I'd see build succeeded. That would then indicate that, okay, you're good to go, you can keep on typing. So then I could say, okay, well, let's print something else out, and let's print a number out. And let's, let's just practice typing something that maybe I'm not super positive if I'm typing it correctly and I want instant feedback, you build it, you get that instant feedback. All right, next thing. Sometimes Xcode can be a little bit weird. It can crash, it can be buggy. And one of the issues that we were running into here at Super Easy Apps is Xcode was behaving wonky with a project. And so there's two things that I would highly recommend. One is you go to file and then, or sorry, Xcode and then quit Xcode. Just quit it, stop all tasks. If you see this dialogue, that'll stop this, <clears throat> that'll stop the simulator and you'll be able to come back to it. Then just reopen Xcode and you can pick up from where you left off. So just go back to that project that you're in that you were last working on and you can boot it back up. If the, the wonky behavior that you're seeing doesn't happen again, then you've probably fixed it by restarting Xcode. The other thing that you can do is, and we had to do this this week with one of the, the projects that we're working on, you have to redo the project. Just do it again. Start a new, brand new project. So go to Xcode, go to File, New, and then Project. And sometimes you can import the source code and, and you can pick up from where you left off. So if we do a single view application, new demo app, and you can just use these default values and then hit next and put it in your projects directory, hit create. Once you do that, you now have the option to try again. So you can start from scratch. So get rid of the boilerplate code that Apple inserts, and then you can start the tutorial again. This is really useful. I do this all the time. I do this for quick little tests. I do this for little projects. When I wanna verify that something's working or if I'm having a problem with a certain feature, I might set up a custom project just to test that one little thing. And then when I figure it out, I come back to my main project and I fix it. But sometimes, like one of the issues that we had this week with IB Designables, the project gets screwed up or something weird happens or a setting changed and you didn't realize that you changed it. And maybe if you knew what you were doing, it wouldn't be a problem. But since you didn't, things got messed up. If that's the case, then it makes sense to go back a step and to, to resume. The other thing that I'm doing, and it's hard to see right now, but all of these lessons that you can follow along with, I have the, the source code that you can pick up. And so if you're following along with one of my lessons, I tend to have both a begin and an end depending on the lesson. And the begin is a clean slate where you can start from if you just wanna pick up a certain lesson and learn a certain technique. You can start with that begin, and if you, you get stuck and you can't figure it out, and something's not working, you want to see, okay, what's the end result look like? You can go do the end code sample. So you can just go into any of these and you can open them up and just verify or compare your code to my code and see what's different. That's another way that you can solve a lot of these problems. The last thing I want to highlight is that sometimes, sometimes there are certain issues, especially when Xcode was in beta, that the only thing that fixes it is a restart of your Mac. And maybe a potentially a restall of Xcode, though I highly doubt reinstalling Xcode. If you're using one from the, the Mac App Store, you're generally good to go. It's just generally, a, a lot of times, just go up to, to Apple and then restart your Mac. It has fixed some issues for me and some of the people that I work with. I know other developers online do this a lot. So I know that was a lot, but this was focused on Xcode, how you can get it to work the tutorials that I create, I try to include both the begin and the start so that you can pick up if you just wanna jump around. And just remember, new project, restart Xcode, restart Mac, or start from scratch in that new project, or you can try and import the code that you've already written, 
but sometimes you've made a mistake, so you don't want to include that mistake. So starting from scratch is the preferred method, especially if you really want to learn this material. All right, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or problems or if any of these issues did not fix your issue and you're still got an outstanding issue. If you do have a build failure, I'm going to have a separate issue on resolving common crash scenarios, and that's going to be another video. So that's another bonus section that I want to include in this little course to get you started and to overcome a lot of the hurdles that you might encounter. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to chatting with you about your app ideas. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you want to download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below. You can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's going to send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects. It's going to be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm going to be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm going to be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.